Hi, everybody, and welcome to this lesson on Azure repos. Now, before we actually look at them within the DevOps environment, I think it's a good idea to get an understanding of what are Azure repos. So generally, Azure repos are basically a set of version control tools that you can use to manage your code. So whether your project is, let's say, large or small, using version control as soon as possible is always a good idea. And usually version control systems are software that will help you track changes you make in your code over time. So as you edit your code, you tell the version control system to take a snapshot of your files. And the control system basically saves that snapshot permanently so you can recall it later if you need. And you use version control to save your work and coordinate code changes across your team. So think about it as a backup tool, you know, where you have backups within your normal infrastructure or your normal environment. Repos or version control is essentially a backup of your code. So even if you're just a single developer, version control is going to help you stay organized as you fix bugs and develop new features because it keeps a history of your development so you can review it and roll back any version of your code with ease. So it's essential to use repos, whether Azure repos or any other repo that you might want to use when you're developing code. Now, obviously, if you're working in an Azure DevOps environment, it's always easier if we use Azure repos. So let's quickly take a look at some of the terminology and concepts that we should get familiarized with within Azure repos. Now, I won't go through each one in detail, but just some of the main ones that I do want to bring or highlight across to you. First are branches. So branches are basically references that keep a history of commit and provide a way to isolate changes for a feature or a bug fix from your master branch and other work. So committing changes to a branch doesn't affect other branches. And you can push and share branches with other people on your team without having to merge changes into a master. Along with that, there are some policies. So there are important parts of the workflow and you can use them to help protect the important branches in your development, for example, like the master branch. Cloning is basically creating a complete local copy of an existing Git repo by cloning it. Commit are basically a group of changes saved to your local repository, and you can share these changes to the remote repository by pushing it. And we'll take a look at the practicality of each one of these later on. Another one to get familiar with is Fork. Now, Fork is a complete copy of a repository, including all files, commits, and optionally, you can also choose to copy over the branches. So the new fork acts as if someone cloned the original repository and then pushed to a new empty repository. So it's kind of like a copy paste. Then we have Git. I'm sure you might have come across Git quite often. Don't get that confused with GitHub. GitHub is also a version of Git. So Git is most commonly used version control system today and is quickly becoming the standard for version control. It's basically a distributed version control system, so your local copy of code is a complete version control repository. So these fully functional repositories, which are local, make it easy to work offline or remotely. So you commit your work locally and then sync your copy of the repository with the copy on the server. Now Git in Azure repos is standard Git. You can use the clients and tools of your choice, such as Git for Windows, Mac, Partners Git Services, and even tools such as Visual Studio or Visual Studio Code. So just keep in mind that Git is a version control system. GitHub is basically a portal that allows or uses Git as a version control system for you to store your software repositories. Then we also have Git workflow. So version control has a general workflow that most developers use when writing code and sharing it with the team. So there's four basic steps. 
So you get a local copy of the code if they don't have one. You make changes to the code to fix any bugs or add any new features. And when that's ready, you make it available for your team. And after your team reviews the code, you merge it into the team's shared Go code base. So that is the basic workflow referred to as Git workflow. Now Git has a version of this workflow that uses terminology and commands such as repositories, branches, commits, and pull requests. Now a few other ones that I just want to quickly highlight. There's something called the push or a pull. So pull requests are basically created to review and merge code into a Git project. So pull request, let your team review the code and give feedback on the changes before you go ahead and merge it into the master branch. So pull requests can come from either topic branches within the same repository or a branch in a fork of the original repository. And a push is basically sharing changes made in commits and branches by using that push command. So when you push, git uploads and saves the commits in your checked branch to the remote repository. So if the branch exists on the remote repository, Git takes the commit and adds them to that branch on the remote repository. And if that branch doesn't exist, Git creates a new branch with the same commit as your local branch. The last thing I want to mention is the TFVC or the Team Foundation Version Control. Now, repos support TFVC, which is a centralized version control system. So typically, team members have only one version of each file on their dev machines. So historical data is maintained only on the server. Branches are path-based and created on the server. So just like with Git, TFVC is also another version control system, and Azure repos support both. So if you want to use Git as your version control system or the TFVC as your version control support system, that is a choice that you can definitely make. Most organizations, like I said, use Git, and that is kind of becoming the industry standard. But TFVC is also an option that is available and supported by Azure repos. And just one thing to keep in mind, the difference between Git and TFVC, Git Think of it as a distributed version control system and the TFVC as a centralized version control system. So in Git, you have a complete copy of your code stored locally, whereas in the TFVC, the complete copy is stored on the server and you're only working on a version on your local machines. But again, it, it, it would depend on the organization policy and which one they're using. But as a standard, most organizations stick with Git.